Hello everyone, welcome to the Aqua Shop Wasabi Aquarium channel. In this episode, we'll be talking about how to do a water change to prevent algae growth, daily maintenance edition. As the title suggests, there is a big connection between water changes and algae growth. I would say that without a good water change schedule, you are basically guaranteed to have trouble with algae. In my opinion, water changes might be the single most important maintenance task for an aquarium. Going back to the title, there's a second part that I wanted to talk about, and that is the daily maintenance part. What I mean by that is the way you think and do water changes will vastly differ based on whether the aquarium is brand new or has been running for a little while, like around a month or longer. So I will be making separate videos for how to do water changes on a brand new aquarium and how to do it on an older aquarium. For this video, we will talk about the latter, which is how to do water changes on an older aquarium. If you want to learn about how to do water changes on a new aquarium or the thought process behind it, don't worry, I will be making that video and releasing it soon. The reason why I thought of making this video was due to how many times I got asked similar questions by my local customers. One of those customers also really wanted a video on water changes, so here it is. First, I have a question for you, the viewer. The question is, how often do you do water changes? I'm going to assume that many of you do a one-third water change weekly, in part due to what I hear most often from my customers. But this video is going to question that practice to see if it's actually effective. Also, I have another question for you, including those of you who are saying you indeed do weekly one-third water changes. My question is, do you do your water changes properly? I would say that there are many aquarists out there who will run into the problem of finding the energy to do water changes due to work or other obligations. The thought process normally goes, eh, I don't want to do it today, I'm too tired, I'll do it tomorrow, and so on. When this happens, there is an increased chance of an algae bloom happening in your aquarium. And I know that many aquarists don't like water changes and wish that they never had to do water changes ever. But, I think this happens due to a lack of understanding on what the whole point of doing a water change is. I feel that if you had even a little bit of knowledge on this topic, your body would automatically do those water changes. So the first part of this video is going to be focused on the why. Why is it important to do water changes in a planted aquarium? To start, first imagine a river in nature. If you compare said river with your aquarium, there is one major difference between them. Now, what do you think that difference is? As you can see in this photo, the answer is water flow. In a river, there is always going to be new water from upstream flowing down, and in that process, replacing some of the water that was in a specific part of the river. And in these environments, where the water is constantly being replaced from flow upstream, many fish and plants thrive. If we compare that to our aquariums at home, our aquariums are quite closed off, Unlike a river, there is no consistent outflow of water or inflow of water coming into the aquarium. That is the major difference between the two. Now, many aquarists, with most of them being beginners, will make the argument slash question where they say something along the lines of, I have a good filter, so shouldn't that mean that I don't really need to do water changes? This thought is quite risky, to put it simply. When you think like this, you are basically going against nature, so it's better to think that you have to replace aquarium water yourself. Like a river in nature, you want to replace the water in your aquarium gradually over time. If we are to speak in ideals, the schedule of doing a one-third water change once a week is quite lacking. Again, if we are to speak in a purely idealistic way, the goal is to replicate a river, which would mean to do water changes every single day whether that is hourly or every five minutes. In theory, that is the best water change schedule that you can do. However, realistically speaking, 
This is a hobby, and many people have other obligations to take care of. Because no one can realistically do water changes daily, that is when the recommendation of a one-third water change every week came to be. But again, in an ideal world, daily water changes is the best schedule that you can have. This is point number one. The next point I'd like to talk about is what happens to water in a closed off environment. Example being an aquarium, if the water has been left alone for too long. So if you do leave your aquarium alone for too long, then what happens? Well first, we probably have fish in our aquascapes, right? So they need to be fed. By feeding fish, you get fish feces, which eventually end up turning into things like nitrogen and phosphorus. So in essence, dirty substances like fish feces start to build up when the aquarium is left alone. And in the case of plants, many people think that the plants will absorb all of that excess waste to make the environment clean. But in reality, things like rotting leaves or melting plants will contribute to the overall dirtiness of an aquarium. Over time, these waste products like nitrates and phosphates will build up and that is not what we want. I would say that there are some people out there who have achieved quote unquote perfect balance where they claim to have not done a water change in months and still have their aquascape look perfect. Now realistically, the people who can say that are part of a very small percentage of people. I would say that the overwhelming majority of people do not have a perfect aquarium, and so they probably have an imbalance of these waste products. A common example is having elevated levels of nitrates, and zero on the other waste related tests. Or the other case you may see is having elevated levels of phosphates, with zero on the other tests. Think of it like a seesaw, where your parameters like nitrates and phosphates may be going up and down constantly. In this environment, algae thrives and it starts to grow like mad. Now, the reason why we do water changes is to prevent this erratic condition from happening in your aquarium, and as a result, preventing an algae bloom from happening. The water changes are also important because in a planted aquarium, we normally have to add liquid fertilizers by hand, and if your aquarium is perfect, you won't have any problems. But if you, for example, add too much fertilizer, it will run into an imbalance of said fertilizer, which can be difficult to catch because we can't really see how much we added. A water change is basically a reset button that will help to zero out those parameters in your aquarium that could have caused many different problems. I hope that made sense. If you can understand the summary I said, then hopefully you should be able to think in a way where it will make you do a water change before things start to die. So that is the end of part two. To summarize, in an ideal world, we are trying to replicate a river, which gets a quote unquote water change throughout the whole day. And our goal with water changes is to replicate a river as much as humanly possible. Now let's get into the main part of the video, which is answering the question of, how do you do a water change that prevents algae growth? There are two main points to talk about. The first point is to create a water change schedule that matches your aquarium's needs. The second point is to choose how much water to change every single time you do a water change. Like I said before, it can be risky to just default to doing one third water changes every week, which I'm pretty sure is the most common water change schedule out there. The reason for this is that every single aquarium is completely different. I highly doubt that there are aquariums out there with the exact same aquascape, the exact same aquarium size, and the exact same fish as one that another person has. Because of this, it is important to modify. A water change schedule should be modified for your specific aquarium, whether that's the number of water changes per week or what percentage of water you change every time. That was point number one. The second point is about how to actually do your water changes. This is going to be about the technique in which you use to get out as much waste as you can. Later in the video, I will show you an example of the best techniques to use when doing a water change, so please look forward to that. Now, let's dive deeper into point number one, which is mainly going to center around how many times you should do water changes per week, and what percentage of water you should change every time. Some of you may be asking, well, how in the world are we supposed to figure that out? If I'm being honest, the single best way to figure that out is by properly observing your aquarium. And then from there, if you notice some algae growth, or the algae just starts to take over, 
then you know it's time to do a water change. You may be wondering, what kind of aquariums can use the standard schedule of a 33% water change once a week? The answer to that is this works with well-established aquariums that have little to no algae growth or any other issues. If your aquarium is like that, then please keep doing that schedule. When you do try to figure out your water change schedule by searching for algae, ignore whatever may be growing on the glass. In a planted aquarium, you generally use strong lighting, which will inevitably grow algae on the glass. The algae being green or brown doesn't really matter. The algae itself is not harmful at all, so just scrape it off and move on. What you do want to look for is algae that is growing on your plants, driftwood, or rocks. When you do see what you think is a little bit of algae growth on your plants, or you see there's a little more algae on your driftwood and rocks, that's when the 33% once a week is not doing enough. This is when you have to start adjusting something. For example, instead of doing 33%, maybe change more water, like 50% once a week. However, there is a better method, and that is to do a 25% water change two times every week. This is a major point, so please listen closely. So for planted aquariums, or I mean really any aquarium, you want to avoid doing large changes of anything as much as possible. I could go on for hours talking about the specifics like how the pH, GH, etc. are all affected, but I will leave that for next time. But to put it simply, you don't want to do big changes to your aquariums whenever possible. So rather than doing one big 50% water change every week, split it up into two smaller 25% water changes every week. That way, it's like you change 50% of the water without any possible negatives from changing that amount at once. Let's say that you start doing two 25% water changes weekly. During the next few weeks, keep an eye out on how the aquarium reacts to the change. With any luck, your algae should go away and your aquarium should look much nicer. Now, the previous examples are imagining an average aquarium with a small algae problem. But what if you have a massive algae outbreak, where the aquarium just looks uninhabitable? Where someone not familiar with aquariums can look at it and tell you something is terribly wrong? In this case, you want to aim to do a 100% water change over the course of one week. This is going to be repeating what I just said a moment ago, but we want to avoid making big changes whenever possible. If you do a 100% water change in one go, you will kill your entire aquarium. So in this scenario, you want to do something like three 33% water changes throughout the week. You want to do it like this so that you change 100% of the water without killing all of your animals. So again, if your aquascape looks something like this one, you want to do three 33% water changes within one week's time. One of the challenging aspects of keeping a planted aquarium is that each individual aquarium is so different in so many ways. This makes it difficult to give blanket statement advice. So what I recommend you do is to take these methods I have told you and adjust it to your specific circumstance. To make an adjustment, make sure you observe your aquarium. Don't ignore it, try finding time once a day to at least have a quick look. Maybe then you notice that some algae is starting to grow on your plants, which leads you to knowing that you need to change something. This is the path to having a beautiful aquarium with no algae and all the animals thriving. It's many times more difficult trying to play the catch-up game than it is to just stay on top of the maintenance, so just don't drag it out. Right after this, I will show you some real examples of what I have been talking about, so I hope you keep watching. Now let's move on to applying this new knowledge in a real world setting. So first, depending on what kind of layout you have, you will want to go about one of two ways, and of course I'll show you both. The method you should use will be dependent on whether you are using soil for the entire aquascape, or if you are using some sort of decorative sand that is separated from the soil. So before you do anything, First, unplug your filter so it doesn't run dry and break when you do a water change. 
I also know that many people choose to clean the glass before starting the water change and then make a mess. Part of this is due to how high of a water level people seem to like keeping their aquariums at. So if you are one of those people, try cleaning the glass after you have drained a bit of water. That way you don't need to worry as much on spilling water. And for actually taking out the water, there are many different ways of doing it. But the way that I do it here at the shop is to just use this hose here and siphon the water out. I found this method to be the easiest to finally adjust if necessary, and it's also the most simple. So first, put one end of the hose into the aquarium water. After that, take one end of the hose and suck on it for just a quick moment. And then, it should start siphoning, like so. Now I know that there are a decent number of aquarists who dislike this siphon starting method. If you are one of those people, then I recommend getting something like this siphon starter. This specific one is from Eheim, but if you cannot find this one, then there are similar products out there, so I will say do a little bit of research to find what is available near you. But anyway, the way this Eheim one works is you just put in the narrow part into the end of the hose, like so. Then you squeeze the bulb a few times, give it a moment, and then it should start to siphon. So if you are interested in getting one of these siphon starters for yourself, I have put a link in the description that you can check out to get one of your very own. As the title of this video suggests, we want to do water changes that prevent algae growth. And so there is a technique that you can use that does just that. The technique is this. If you can see the algae with your own eyes, try to siphon as much as you can of that visual algae out of the aquarium. Or if you do not see any major algae growth, try to get the hose as low as you can without siphoning out the substrate. Reason being that waste in an aquarium will sink to the bottom over time, which means that even if we cannot see it, there is usually a high concentration of waste substances in the lower parts of the aquarium. So having the hose as low as you can get it will help tremendously when doing a water change to prevent algae growth. Another thing you should do is to move your hands like so. I'm sorry that this is hard to see. It is a for sale aquarium, so I don't have an aqua soil in here. But the concept is the same regardless of soil or not. You want to kind of swish the surface of the substrate, which will then stir up any waste that was trapped on the surface. This lets you get out the waste that has developed in an efficient manner. So instead of having the hose closer to the surface of the water, try to get the hose lower in the aquarium. Alright, as you can see, I lowered the water level just a little bit, so the next step is to clean the glass. You may be wondering why not just do it after you have finished taking out the water. Well, the reason for doing it at this stage is because when you do scrape the algae off the glass, the resulting waste enters the water column. And we want to remove as much of that waste as we can, so that's why we do it after lowering the water level a little bit. Also you probably want to reduce the amount of water splashing out of the aquarium, which is why I recommend cleaning the glass after lowering the water level. Once you are finished cleaning the glass, you then want to continue to finish up your water change, whether it's 33% or 25% or however much you need to do. Oh, one other part I should mention is what to do with melted or decaying plant matter in the aquarium. Well, it's quite simple. I recommend taking your hose to those melted plants and to siphon it out during your water change. So there are some quality of life accessories slash tools for water changes that I would like to show you. Now I'm pretty sure most of you have something like this. This is called a Pro Hose from a brand called Suisaku. You can use it in a very similar fashion to a normal hose, and it comes with this useful suction tool which can also start a siphon if you do not want to put your mouth on the end of the hose. There are times when you should and should not use a tool like this, which I will talk about in a moment. This tool is useful even to someone with an aquasoil only layout, so I've put a link in the description to this product if you're interested in getting one.
Next up is how to do a water change when you're using decorative sand separated from the soil. For this specific layout, the sand is in the front of these rocks with the soil separated towards the back. Can you see it? The soil is below where you can see the Utricularia graminifolia, or UG for short, growing. When you have a layout like this, there are a few things you need to do in order to maintain it beautifully. It may be hard to see, but you want to clean up the soil spill on the sand. What I mean by that is over time, soil will spill onto the sand section, which you will want to siphon out when you do a water change. Doing this will maintain that beautiful sand look, so I recommend that you do it. So now I'll show you how to do that. Like with the previous example, we first put the hose in, and then start a siphon. And just like that, we start taking out the spilled soil. This is pretty precise work that can be difficult to do, so a technique I recommend using when doing this is to squeeze the hose with your other hand, like so. If you don't do this, you will suck out the plants with the soil. By squeezing the hose, you can adjust the amount of water being siphoned out, which means you will be able to get just the soil. This example may be a bit difficult to see due to not having much soil to take out. In layouts with a bad soil spill, it will be easier to siphon it all out, which will lead to a better looking aquascape. During this step, if the surface of your decorative sand is looking dirty or algae is growing on it, go ahead and siphon out those dirty areas. Kind of like this. After you do take out some of the sand, I recommend that you put in more sand to replace the amount you removed. This will dramatically make the aquascape look much nicer, so definitely do this while you take out soil spills. I mentioned this pro hose tool a little while ago, talking about when I wouldn't use it. When you are planning to clean your decorative sand area, this is when I would not use this. Reason being that the pro hose has a little screen inside the plastic tube part. If you try to use the pro hose on sand that has soil pellets mixed in, or in an aquarium with lots of large pieces of debris, it can clog up the screen causing the siphon to stop. So when you do want to suck up large items like soil pellets or decaying plant leaves, I recommend using your standard hose rather than a contraption like this. But do not make the mistake of thinking this sort of tool is useless. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It's a very convenient tool, not only because it has a siphon starter built in, but it also allows you to siphon in harder to reach areas due to how long the plastic tube is. The saying goes, the right tool for the right job, correct? Use these tools accordingly so that you can do the best water changes possible. So, how is the video? To summarize, when maintaining the most beautiful planet aquariums possible, it becomes very important to understand the why behind water changes, and also how to do water changes. If there is one thing I want you to take away from this video, it is to not blindly follow any one piece of advice. In this day and age, it is very easy to go online, search for these topics, and end up with hundreds of different pieces of advice. But if all of this advice leads to having beautiful aquariums, we wouldn't have any struggles now, would we? This will be a lot more obvious for those with multiple aquariums, but each aquarium is different. You may have one that's thriving and looking fantastic, or you may have one that's struggling to survive. And because of these differences, the methods that work from one aquarium may not work for another. So rather than relying on one piece of advice from other people, just look at your tank for 5 to 10 minutes a day. And then if you see something that needs to be fixed, rather than just pigeonholing yourself into 33% weekly water changes, adjust it as you need to. Adapting to how your specific aquarium works and to what it needs is the key to having a beautiful planet aquarium. And when it comes to the actual guide portion on how to do water changes, there wasn't anything too major for the technique. It was mainly small points like putting your hose lower in the aquarium because waste sinks to the bottom. 
or that wastes like fish feces and melting plants can get stuck or trapped on the substrate, so you want to stir it up with your hand. Or just wave the hose back and forth above the substrate can get more waste out. Doing small things like this consistently makes a massive difference in how much algae can grow in your aquarium, or it can help to eradicate an existing algae problem. It's these small things that can make a big difference, so I hope you look back to how you have been doing water changes all this time, and hopefully improve your technique. And with those improvements, your aquarium should look more beautiful than it already may look. If you still have some unanswered questions regarding this topic of water changes, please comment down below and I'll be sure to read it. However, at this time it is difficult for me to answer everyone's question, so I apologize if your question doesn't get answered. But if a similar question gets asked multiple times, I will try to answer it as a new video in a sort of Q&A style, so please don't be discouraged from asking. If you learned something from this video, or you enjoy watching this sort of content, please consider subscribing to the Wasabi Aquarium channel. I'll be putting out more how-tos and videos on different techniques regarding